All right, guys, I'm sitting here with Dave Rigotti. He is the co-founder and growth marketing at inflection.io, which is a B2B marketing platform built for the modern data stack. And he's also running PLGTM. He's a co-founder there, which is the best event for go-to-market leaders and professionals at companies with a product-led motion. Dave, very nice to sit down with you today. That's right. Yeah, it's so nice to sit down with you too. Excited to chat and um, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. And thanks everyone for, for tuning in. Awesome. So we typically always ask, what's, uh, how did you get to where you are today? What's your background? I see you have a lot. You've had a lot of experience in marketing and account-based marketing especially. So I'd love to hear the backstory. Yeah. Out of college, I spent almost five years at Microsoft. I'll just skip over all of that. <laughs> Mm. Um, but then I, I joined a startup in 2013 as the first marketing hire about, I think I was employee number five or six, um, mm -hmm. called Visible, B-I-Z-I-B-L-E, um, which does marketing attribution software for B2B SaaS companies. Mm -hmm. Um, so I ran marketing there. We scaled that business quite a lot. Um, we sold in 2018 to Marketo. Um, so I was running marketing at Visible, got into Marketo in 2018 and spent a couple years at Marketo uh, doing account-based marketing, enterprise demand generation, BDR mm -hmm. kind of support marketing, and then left in 2020 to team up with a lot of my visible crew to be a co-founder at inflection.io. And mm -hmm. the kind of quick summary is we're basically like marketing automation for product-led companies. That's amazing. What's really fascinating about this is that you worked in marketing roles at marketing companies, especially companies that really made it big. So curious that not many people have had that perspective. What have you taken away from that? Yeah, I think um, I didn't really ever. Well, when I when I when I left to join Visible, and it probably took me a while to realize this, uh, how great that is <laughs> to be like to be doing marketing at a company that is selling software to marketers. It's a different, it's a different challenge, um, but I, I liked it a lot. Like one, everyone just like understands marketing at a company. It's probably like being a, a developer at a company that right. sells dev tools. Um, so it's really cool. I think what also is really neat is you get to be like customer zero for like every new feature. You get to try right. it out before it gets into, you know, to any customer accounts. You're, you're front line for like finding yep. bugs and like giving feedback to product managers. So mm -hmm. um, marketing at a, at a MarTech company is um, probably like 85% marketer, like 10% product manager, 10% QA, mm -hmm. or like 5% right. QA, 5% product manager, and I don't know, something else. And so I think that was, that was cool. I think a, a big takeaway is... Um, I think it's an awesome place to be if you're a marketer um, mm -hmm. working at a MarTech company. You should try to figure out at Very least at some point in your career to like give a whirl. <laughs> yeah, it's it's got to be incredible because uh, if you worked at, say, Marketo and you're selling Marketo software to a Marketo executive using Marketo, then right off the bat, they can already see the value proposition that you're trying to recommend to them. And then you, yeah. you speak their language. You use the, They trust you if you're an influencer. You know, All these things kind of work towards your advantage. So it's, it's the, like you said, if anybody has the opportunity as a marketer to work in a marketing company, it, it's, it's got to be a great experience. Yeah, we would always like um, the marketing leaders um, at Visible and Marketo and even now at Inflection were almost mini sales engineers sometimes. Like we'll go into a sales deal and demo, like here's how we, here's Inflection on Inflection or Marketo on Marketo or Visible on Visible. Mm -hmm. Like here's how we've, we run our business on it um, mm -hmm. as like a, like a case study, which is, which is always fun. Yeah, it, you can speak from firsthand experience. And that's probably one of the biggest gaps in go to market these days is people selling and marketing tools that they themselves may have never used before. So it's a lot better to speak from a customer standpoint and you yourself are your own customer because you use your own tool. Yeah, really it makes it a lot easier for sure. <laughs> so um, you've probably gone through different iterations of how you do marketing. Maybe it would be great to walk through how that thinking has evolved um, from when you first started off yeah. to where you are today. Yeah, first starting off in like 2013, this is like the rise of inbound and content marketing. And so we we grew the first, I don't know, 3 million of ARR at Visible without, um, without BDRs or SDRs, just like pure kind of like inbound content generation, marketplaces, this, this, these sort of things. And then like 
2014 to 2018, I think was like peak of like outbound. And this is like the rise of outreach, the rise of sales mm -hmm. loft. We, we sold visible in 2018, we were about 120 employees and about 40 of them were BDRs. Um, so we were like all in on, on outbound, both warm and cold outbound. Mm -hmm. And the marketing team had shifted at the end of, probably the end of 2016 and definitely through 2018 of, um, we were like very account-based, um, mm -hmm. all of our ads were account-based. We were account-based at conferences. Like we would have a list of people we wanted to go meet at conferences. Um, and then the marketing team was very much focused on like BDR enablement. Like how do we get our BDR team to go from four opportunities a month or to five opportunities a month. And if we can do that across, you know, 40 BDRs, that's, that, right. that's huge. And so we spent a lot of time on like direct mail and just thinking about like BDR enablement slash like account based marketing mm -hmm. as the means to support, uh, the BDR team. And then so now, yeah, go ahead. No, please. And then now at inflection and so Marketo was kind of the same way, um, very like inbound plus kind of ABM at, at the end, um, when mm -hmm. I left and now at inflection, we're very account, account based. Like we have certain companies that we, that we target, but we don't do the spray and pray or even any cold outbound. We do no outbound, no cold outbound. And we're all about kind of warm, warm outbound, inbound, warm outbound, um, and building relationships for the long term. Then just you know spray and just get a little bit of money, uh, a little bit of ARR now. So we've we've evolved from like inbound, mm -hmm. um, which is like you know basically doing like warm email to then outbound, and now we're back to kind of warm, warm. Uh, warm outbound, uh, warm email, but in a little different way. Would love to learn more about this actually. At Warmly here, we big proponents of doing everything warm. So warm outbound, very familiar. We have our version of it. Would love to hear yours actually. Yeah, ours is, um, well, one is we run our own event. So that's, you talked about PLGTM. So right. um, when we think warm outbound, we'll, we generally think about the digital touch points, but we do in-person warm, outreaches too and warm connections too. So we run our own industry event. It's not a user conference. It's really, we're bringing together sponsors and put on a great event. Um, so that to us is like a warm, warm outbound, or, you know, if we meet them at an event and they're at our event, like that's, that's kind of warm outbound. And so we don't sponsor events. Um, we only host our own conference every year. So wow. um, that's a little bit of a different approach on events. And then we certainly do the traditional inbound playbook, uh, run LinkedIn ads to content downloads, and then, you know, work those inbound leads. And then on kind of warm digital outbound, we look at, you know, like the website and who's visiting the website. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of LinkedIn too. So we're very active on LinkedIn. As we kind of talked about, we've been in the industry for a long time. Um, so we have a lot of connections. We have people liking our content on LinkedIn and we yeah. spend a lot of time thinking about, um, LinkedIn for op generation. And I don't mean like send a connection request and then pitch slap them and send them a cool DM. Like we don't, yeah. we don't do that at all. It's much more about monitoring our connections. And if they're starting to like our content or we're seeing a number of people from uh, the same company start to like our content or request uh, to connect with us and visit the website. That's a really great signal that they're spending time looking at inflection. And so we'll proactively kind of reach out to them, but it's not cold LinkedIn DMs or anything like that. It sounds like it's a combination of signals, education, and then uh, strategically placed outreach. Give, give, yeah. give time that they're interested, maybe then convert. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely right. Um, yeah, that's definitely right. Nice. And I, I, I realized that it, Invisible, you probably had, you know, you said 30, 40 SDRs, and you probably were thinking about predictable scaling, how to grow the company predictably. It seems the game has changed a little bit, and it's a lot more hard to be predictable when you have events, social, these things that are kind of go in spurts. How do you think about that? Yeah, it's it's funny. We, yeah, at, at Visible, we were, we obviously made marketing attribution software, so we were obsessed with 
being the best customer we can be and measuring everything and tracking everything. And we are a little bit, you know, here at inflection, um, but probably less so. Um, it's it's less, you know, tracking touch points and much more about, I don't know, like there's a little bit of a feeling to it. <laughs> like yeah. we definitely will look at like the event, like, you know, how many opportunities do we get out of the event? Do they convert? But we're not saying like, okay, they had eight touch points with us right. on our ad channels, six on our website from SEO. And then we met them at an event and then, you know, doing multi-touch attribution across that. We're not not doing that, at least not yet. I mean, we're yeah. still pretty early on our, on our go-to-market. We've been, we're very, very, very product and engineering focused company. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure that'll change when we have 20 salespeople um, but for now we're very much like, let's just focus on having great conversations, great engagements mm -hmm. and with the right people, yep. um, then trying to be like, all right, let's, here's the playbook. Let's, let's just crank out the playbook and just kind yeah. of hope for the best. Can we talk about this topic of like things that have worked in the past that don't really work as well today? <laughs> things I want to hear. Things like ABM, does that still work today? How does that change? Did it work in the past? And then also attribution, having worked at Marketo, this is one of the biggest problems that you guys are probably solving for. So yeah, very curious. Yeah, yeah I, look, I don't think ABM is, is going away. We're very ABM. We have a target account list. Um, I think just maybe how that playbook's implemented is a little bit different. Um, I think less cold mass emails and much more kind of relevancy and personalization and um kind of right message right time is i mean it's like a theme in marketing that's always existed and i think will continue to exist so you know in 2014 you used to be able to just load up a bunch of email addresses blast away and go get a lot of pipeline a lot um and that's you know not not really going to cut it anymore especially with kind of Google spam policy right. changes. So I think that's one, but I think what's here to stay is marketing teams partnering with BDR teams or SDR teams and mm -hmm. enabling them and thinking about what can marketing do to support them beyond just giving them leads, but how do we make them efficient and converting leads to opportunities? Um, I think, you know, that didn't exist in 2013. It exists today and will stay, but I think the, how we do quote outbound will, will be a little bit different. And then we see with our customers a lot on, um, you know, we're not a product led organization ourselves, but all of our customers are product led. And, mm -hmm. and that's something that is kind of the opposite. It didn't, didn't really, it wasn't really a thing 10 years ago. And now it's absolutely a thing. And you have marketing teams that went from, you know, just pushing everyone into a request a demo form and being obsessed about net new opportunities and that new pipeline. And now, that's still true, uh, but now also, you know, getting obsessed about self-service revenue, net new signups, um, right. and even beyond that, like expansions and so much of the product led motion is revenue generated post the initial purchase, um, which is a new a new motion for a lot of a lot of marketing teams. So maybe the like cold outbound maybe doesn't work as well as it as it used to, but. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that gave way to the rise of product led because all mm -hmm. outbound you do to your signups or all outbound you do to your users is very, very warm, very, very, you know, it's not a cold outreach. And so right. I think the best companies are shifting from thinking about just net new pipeline to how do we go mm -hmm. get more from our existing customers through intelligent campaigns, warm out mm -hmm. outreach campaigns to existing users. It's kind of like scaling the first 10 customers. I've heard this from a lot of founders where you get your first 10 customers by fishing close to the pond. And then you get your competitors from those first 10 customers and you get intros from them, you get intros from them. And by extension, a lot of like these tools like user gems, job change tracking, your customers are your biggest advocates. And who yeah. are you going to trust more? Are you going to trust the salesperson who has a quota? And then also may have never used the product themselves in the first place, or you're going to trust this customer who has been a peer of yours and you follow along from company to company and you listen to what they have to say, speak highly about this tool. So it is interesting to hear how warm is being scaled these days. Yeah. Yeah. Job changes are great. Uh, 
you know, interacting with your LinkedIn content or interacting with your website, downloading your content. And there's mm -hmm. so, uh, there's so much to it. Yeah. How about, um, attribution? I know that's a, that's a, that's a tough one, but curious to hear yeah. your thoughts. On that. Yeah. I, this topic is, it's, it's been buzzy on LinkedIn these last couple of years. It used to be like 2013, nobody had heard about attribution. So we were the, the category leader for attribution. Um, and, uh, visible probably still is uh, mm -hmm. the category leader for B2B attribution. I think I'm pretty sure anyways, at least from a revenue standpoint. And then, um, so 2013, like nobody had heard about attribution 2016 through 18, like people had started to hear about attribution and then it got, it got really big post 2018, a bunch of new vendors popped up and there's always the debate. Well, it's a new debate now of should you be doing multi-touch attribution or should you just have a field on your forms that says, how did you hear about us? Right. Um, I think I have no, no commentary on that. Like I think both have places, um, you know, you can't track absolutely everything. Like, you know, you're doing this podcast, like, is this podcast ever going to show up in a, in a marketing analytics report for, Wow. generating warmly a pipeline like absolutely not but like you know certainly if you're running ads or google ads or linkedin ads like you you know you want to be able to understand the performance of that at a region level at a campaign right. level at an ad level at a keyword level and you're never going to get that detail in a how did you hear about us form and so i think both are um it's not an either or i think there's um you know, a, a place for, for, for both. And, but it's been interesting to see attribution, like how many people talk about attribution now versus five years ago, it was, we would still go into meetings with folks and say, talk about attribution. They're like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so it's, it's cool. I wish, I wish all of this conversation that, that I see on LinkedIn about attribution and the debates about it existed like six years ago. Um, yeah. That would have been good for our pipeline. <laughs> oh yeah. That would have been terrific. <laughs> you decide how to do this. It's always right. lagged 10 years. I mean, even things like inbound, right? Like that wasn't a thing until HubSpot came around. And then yeah. Inbound. Yeah. But even that took, I mean, that took years to, to build right. up. Um, so yeah. Anyway, it's like people, if people are like debating, like warm outbound and that's, that's great for warmly. <laughs> yeah. Thank God we got this brand and this name. Um, so how should marketers be thinking about their time and how they pitch to the CEO or the executive team about their big initiatives in Q1, you know, yeah. like you could do some paid ads, you can get some quick leads in, or you can also, you know, try to build for something greater, but it takes time. And like you said, you can't always get attribution right off the bat. Yeah. I think, um, hopefully everyone's already done, um, a work back waterfall schedule, um, for 2024 and understanding what's your revenue goals by month or at least by quarter. How much pipeline do you need to generate and when to go um, hit those revenue numbers? You know, we're in, we're in Q1, you, you know, you maybe only have a couple more months to generate a pipeline that uh, is going to close in Q3 and you're probably already starting to run against Q4 uh, revenue. So I think a lot of people always underestimate how quickly marketing converts to revenue at a, at a B2B SaaS company. And so hopefully all of that's, that's mm -hmm. been done. Um, what's always worked for me um, is doubling down on the things that are working. So if you're hosting an event, go bigger. If you're doing a road show, do five, and it's working well, do five cities instead of three cities. Um, I, and then I think um, another thing is always there's more in your customers than you realize. Um, I don't mean like customer marketing. I mean upsells, expansions. Um, we see like some of the best marketing teams now are leaning into the product onboarding experience. So, you know, mm. marketing used to never care about product onboarding. And that wasn't a, a goal. Um, expansion revenue was never a goal. NRR was never a goal. And so, you know, now marketing teams wow. are getting into expansions and, and NRR and they're finding like, hey, the way that you know, product team had set up onboarding is, is okay, but it's not great. And marketing team can come in and marketing teams are very good at like methodical campaigns to convert, you know, users from like a content download into pipeline. You can have the same mindset for your product adoption. Like 
somebody signs up like methodical campaigns to, you know, drive the initial onboarding and then actually adopting the product. And I saw one company they shifted from a, a product kind of 20, every 24 hour drip nurture for um, product onboarding to a campaign that marketing spun up in like about a week um, that is much more methodical and it's got branching and it's um, if a user hasn't done a step instead of sending them an email the next day about the next step, send them a reminder and just like a, a good campaign that you would almost just do for like content downloads, doing the same thing for onboarding. And was marketing took this over and they boosted product adoption 20%. And so this is like marketing spent a couple of weeks of time. Wow. You're now boosting product adoption 20%. That's like, that's going to show up, you know, in a year later yeah. on, on less churn. And you now have people who have actually adopted the product that you can expand. And so um, it's not yeah. too late. It might be too late to generate like pipeline for the right. year already, or you're coming up against it very soon. Um, but it's almost never too late to go execute campaigns on uh, adoption, onboarding, adoption, and customer expansion. Um, you can yep. send an email today and go generate you know, revenue tomorrow. That's amazing. I really like that. This, this whole idea of doing things today for the investment in the future, it's a cost not to be doing these. It's a cost not to send that email. That's, yeah. you know, there's leads coming in today, but they haven't converted. There's already leads in here that are using your product that could be using your product. All you had to do is just send one extra email. Right. And it usually is a, is a metrics problem. Marketing, like CMOs are typically measured on net new pipeline mm -hmm. as their goal um, or opportunities created. And so obviously expanding customers or make sure customers adopt the product is not in that goal. And so I think, um, if that's, if you're a CEO listening, really think about if just an only a net new pipeline or only an opportunity goal is the right goal for marketing. And if you're in marketing, what a great opportunity to come to your CEO and say, uh, tell him or her, like, Hey, I think there's an opportunity for us to lean in a little bit more on the, on the post purchase side and go generate more revenue. Um, what a great, great way to be a standout CMO right now. Right. It's, you have a really interesting perspective because you're both head of marketing in past marketing companies, and you're also uh, leading your own company today. And so how, where are you placing your bets as far as investments today, investments for the future? Yeah, we are investing heavily on connections, um, warm connections. Like I spend a lot of my time thinking about LinkedIn engagement, a lot of time thinking about website engagement, a lot of time on our own PLGTM events. So everything for us is uh, building for the long haul. We know like a, and content marketing is included in that. We know things basically like marketing channels that com compound over time um, versus give you that like quick immediate hit. Mm -hmm. um, we know we're building a long-term durable company and we'll be around for for many, many, many years. And um, so we're, we're investing now for uh, lots of, of payoff in the future. We always, you know, every company always wants more pipeline. Um, so I'll always, I'll always take more pipeline <laughs> but, yeah. uh, or more revenue, but we're not, um, we're very long-term focused with what we're doing. And, and again, it just comes to we're we're building a long-term company here. That's right, building an empire. Yeah. It was not built in a day. It right. really the work. But one day it's going to be there. That's right. That's what a head of sales kicking always says. Yeah. Just brick by brick. And then one day, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it becomes a palace. And you don't even realize how much you've built. And right. It's and producing and vibrant ecosystem. It's beautiful. So, uh, a couple last questions. What was some of the inflection points in inflection? Uh, yeah, we're still. Uh... We're still early from our, our company perspective, but I'll say the way we started Inflection is we went out. So we left Marketo, we interviewed 100, 120 companies about their problems and just got really, um, was a really big student about that. Um, we didn't have an idea of what we wanted to go do. We just said, we want to go solve a big problem. What's mm -hmm. your biggest problem? Um, and so I think the, uh, the initial kind of genesis is, a, is, is always important. For, right. for startups, um, it's not necessarily like our own idea. We really went out and got really methodical about how are we going to go learn about what, what we want to go do. So I think that was, that's one. Um, it's, 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 there's a, a market pool. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then another is just we're we're very intentional about the types of companies that we work with, um, the kind of brand that we're building. Um, we don't let just anyone use our our product. Um, we have some really fantastic companies using our product, public companies, companies that are 500 employees, 1,000 employees, kind of building wow. a mid-market brand from the beginning. Um, and we seen, we're seeing that payoff already, um, which is great. And not being, you know, I, a most, and I say that because most startups start serving SMBs because it's easier and then try to move up market over time. Um, and there's challenges with that. That's what we did at our last startup. And we're be- being intentional about starting mid-market as much as possible. Wow. Um, and um, we're three years in, and that seems to be the right decision. Well said. Biggest advice or best advice you've received? Um, the best advice I ever received. I don't know if this is the best. Re- I don't know if I ever received it, but I think it's the best advice that I give. <laughs> Um, I think for careers, a lot of people think about, um, like working on their, their weaknesses. Um, I think that's the wrong way to think about skills and careers. You should, um, instead think about what you're really great at and find a job company or role or whatever manager that really leans into that and appreciates that. So, um, I think it's much better to maximize your strengths and being a place that maximizes your strengths, than to think about um, improving your 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 personal weaknesses. No, oh, I love that advice a lot. Actually, it's uh, it's in plenty of books out there. Especially the only thing that matters. And if you find people like when they're in their zone of genius, everything comes easy. Yeah, because it's zone of genius, and they try not to do things they're not good at. So this is our second startup together. Like the the leadership team. Here at Inflection, like we've worked together for 10 years. Um, wow. Yeah. And so I think um, maybe that's another piece that of advice that comes out a lot of don't burn bridges. Like this, yeah. this, this world is so small, so small. And you just, you just never know. You just never know. <laughs> 10 years is a long time. And you've probably got many, many more ahead of you to build more things. That's right. Dave, it's been fantastic having you on today. Thank you so yeah. much for your time. Where can people more? Yeah, you can learn more. Um, you can learn more about inflection at inflection.io. And then I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. So you can just search for me on LinkedIn, Dave Rigotti, and um, happy to connect with anyone.